Good morning. I'm Alice Finnamore. I'm the minister at Prince William Pastoral Charge in New Brunswick in Canada. Thank you for joining us. Happy Easter. Gather us in, ground us in you. Gather us in, ground us in you. Gather us in, gather us in, ground us, ground us in you. Let's pray. Holy One, as we watch the sun rise on this Easter morning, we rejoice that all things become new. We rejoice that every death is followed by resurrection and accept that every resurrection must follow a death, an ending, a letting go. We come today, this Easter morning, in gratitude for your loving kindness, for holding us through our hard times. We lift our voices in worship. Even here, in the holy sanctuaries of our homes, we come together as one body, trusting that our times of worship will also be resurrected into new life. Amen. Our scripture today, actually we have two. I'm reading both of them from the contemporary English version, as I most often do. And the first one is Psalm 118. Tell the Lord how thankful you are, because he is kind and always merciful. Let Israel shout, God is always merciful. Let the family of Aaron, the priest, shout, God is always merciful. Let every true worshiper of the Lord shout, God is always merciful. When I was really hurting, I prayed to the Lord. He answered my prayer and took my worries away. The Lord is on my side and I am not afraid of what others can do to me. With the Lord on my side, I will defeat all of my hateful enemies. It is better to trust the Lord for protection than to trust anyone else, including strong leaders. Nations surround me, but I got rid of them by the power of the Lord. They attacked from all sides, and I got rid of them by the power of the Lord. They swarmed around like bees, but by the power of the Lord, I got rid of them and their fiery sting. Their attacks were so fierce that I nearly fell, but the Lord helped me. My power and my strength come from the Lord, and he has saved me. From the tents of God's people come shouts of victory. The Lord is powerful. With his mighty arm, the Lord wins victories. The Lord is powerful, and so my life is safe, and I will live to tell what the Lord has done. He has punished me terribly, but he did not let death lay its hands on me. Open the gates of justice. I will enter and tell the Lord how grateful I am. Here is the gate of, of the Lord. Everyone who does right may enter this gate. I praise the Lord for answering my prayers and saving me. The stone that the builders tossed aside has now become the most important stone. The Lord has done this and it is amazing to us. This day belongs to the Lord. Let's celebrate and be glad today. We'll ask the Lord to save us. We'll sincerely ask the Lord to let us win. God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you from here in the house of the Lord. Our second scripture is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. On Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran to Simon Peter and to Jesus' favorite disciple and said, They have taken the Lord from the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. They ran side by side until the other disciple ran faster than Peter and got there first. He bent over and saw strips of linen cloth lying inside the tomb. But he did not go in. When Simon Peter got there, he went into the tomb and saw the strips of cloth. He also saw the piece of cloth that had been used to cover Jesus' face. It was rolled up and in a place by itself. The disciples who got there, the disciple who got there first, then went into the tomb, and when he saw it, he believed. 
At that time, Peter and the other disciple did not know that the scripture said Jesus would rise to life. So the two of them went back to the other disciples. Mary Magdalene stood crying outside the tomb. She was still weeping when she stooped down and saw two angels inside. They were dressed in white and were sitting where Jesus' body had been. One was at the head and the other was at the foot. The angels asked, Mary, why are you crying? She answered, they have taken away my Lord's body. I don't know where they have put him. As soon as Mary said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. She did not know who he was. Jesus asked her, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener and said, Sir, if you have taken his body away, please tell me so I can go and get him. Then Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni. The Aramaic word Rabboni means teacher. Jesus told her, Don't hold on to me. I have not yet gone to the Father, but tell my disciples that I'm going to the one who is my Father and my God, as well as your Father and your God. Mary Magdalene then went and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord. She also told them what he had said to her. May our hearts be blessed by these words from our ancient scriptures. Here we are, this second Easter outside of our churches, our second Easter online. We never imagined this. As some have said, it's like Lent 2020 has been a whole year long. The whole year has been learning about letting go to suffer for the good of others, to work together toward a new beginning, toward a resurrection beyond this death. How scared we were last Easter. We did not know what we were facing. We still don't know where this is leading, what variants may come, what future pandemics may develop. We still know so little, but we know more than last year. We are used to the routine, but we still suffer. We are still lonely. It's like we are in an extended Easter Saturday, waiting, waiting, waiting. In our troubles, Throughout this year, we have been reminded that troubles come and go, but God's love remains, never ending. That is one of the messages of our psalm today. God's love transforms difficult times into victory. God's mercy, God's steadfast love, or to use the Hebrew word chesed. This love holds us and sustains us through it all. This is our hope, our hope against hope. In the face of the worst difficulties, the worst odds. The psalm we just read Psalm 118 is a song that's traditionally sung at the Passover meal. When Jesus ate his last meal with his friends before he was betrayed that night, our scriptures say that after they had sung a hymn, they went out. This is the song. This is likely the hymn that they sang. This is the song that was singing in Jesus' heart as he went to the Mount of Olives to pray. The song that he was hearing in his mind when he was standing in front of his accusers. It's a song of thanksgiving, a song detailing how the singer was delivered from a tight spot, from a time of trouble. 
The psalm is based on the song of Moses, which he and the people sang on the banks of the Red Sea. After escaping from Egypt, after seeing the Egyptian chariots get stuck in the mud and be washed away by the returning floodwaters, the people have been rescued. Just as Passover recalls the night when they were passed over when the angel of death went by to the Egyptian people. This psalm recalls their rescue at the Red Sea. An interesting thing happens in verse 19 and 20. The psalmist sings out for the gates of justice to be opened so they can go in and give thanks. The response is, here is the gate of the Lord. Everyone who does right may enter. But what does it mean that everyone who does right may enter? None of us consistently do what's right. Not all the time. And what does right mean anyway? In other translations than the one that we read this morning, the verse sometimes sounds like, the righteous will enter. Who are the righteous? That is the condition for entrance. Righteousness. In Jewish tradition, the righteous are not those who do everything right because that's impossible. Instead, the righteous are the ones who acknowledge that we owe our lives to God and that our future depends on God, only on God. When we have that attitude of dependence and of gratitude to the life-giving force of the holy, of the sacred, we are able then to enter in into a relationship with the sacred, into victory. And so the psalm tells us, this is the day. This is the day. This day belongs to God. Can you imagine Jesus humming this tune as he went to the cross? This day, even this day, belongs to God. This verse has inspired some of our favorite hymns. One of them was a song that I chose to sing during labor when my son was being born. This is the day, this is the day that our God has made, that our God has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that our God has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that our God has made. I sang this song to strengthen myself through the suffering of labor, that happy happy suffering and difficulty on that day. I like to think that Jesus too would have been strengthened by the words of this song, that keeping his eyes on God and being dependent on God for his life and for his future, he could enter in through the gates of justice into God's presence as the psalmist declares. There was suffering for him that day too, but also deep in his heart, there was rejoicing. Rejoicing that buoyed up his spirit as he faced the emotional and physical pain. God's love, God's presence can change all difficulties into victory. And so, perhaps Jesus did focus on this tune, on these words of Psalm 118. 
during his time of suffering and death. Perhaps as he took his last breath, he saw the gates of the Lord swing open. Were the disciples able to hear the words of this song in their minds? We know that eventually they were able to bring the words of the psalm into their understanding of what happened that day. Again and again, our scriptures echo the words about the stone that was rejected being the most important stone. Jesus himself mentioned that metaphorical stone in reference to his own life and the coming of the kingdom of heaven in Matthew 21, 42. Every time they sang that song, they would remember. In our gospel story today from John chapter 20, the suffering of Friday is over. The waiting of Saturday is done. And it is Sunday morning early. Mary Magdalene had been at the tomb and it was empty. She ran to tell Peter and John, we do believe, that the favorite, the beloved disciple was John. And the three of them ran back, raced back to the tomb together. John got there first. He looked in and saw nothing but the linen cloths that had wrapped Jesus' body. Peter arrived next. He went right inside and then John followed. And this time, John believed. It doesn't say that Peter believed. He just felt the emptiness. He saw the cloth and wondered. The two men went back, back to the rest of their friends, but Mary Magdalene stayed. She stayed there with her feelings, sinking deep into her grief. She stayed with the experience long enough to meet the holy. First the angel spoke, and then Jesus appeared to her. She wanted to hug him, but Jesus said, not yet. He had not yet gone to the Father, he said. He was in the in-between, the time of already, but not yet. A time where we too are standing where we too stand waiting even 2,000 years later. In this time of in-between, in the time when there is resurrection, but not the fullness, not yet, of resurrection, we wait. And how do we wait? Are we like Peter who came and saw and went away without believing, still wondering? Are we like John who came and believed, but who still went away without the full experience? Or can we be like Mary Magdalene, allowing ourselves to be in the experience, to sit with those feelings, to wait in the holy place for resurrection to happen in our hearts. Each of these days, the day of suffering and death that we remember as Good Friday, the day of waiting in the silent tomb, Saturday, and the day of resurrection, every one of these days is the day. Each of these days was a day that the Lord had made. Each of these days was the day of the Lord. In our experience now, when we remember how hard it was at the beginning of the pandemic, the suffering and fear that we all experienced, that was the day of the Lord the day that God had made. Then 
in all these months of waiting in the darkness and silence of our solitude and our isolation, our Holy Saturday, we are still within the day, each day being the day that God has made. As I said earlier, we still seem to be in that quiet waiting of Saturday. Resurrection is coming. The sky is brightening on the horizon, but we are not there yet. Just as Jesus was not there. Not yet. Even on Sunday morning, Easter morning, we will reach our Sunday. We will come out of this pandemic. Our world will rise again. We will again sing our resurrection songs, our Easter hymns, loudly and with unmasked faces. And then comes Monday. On the Monday of the first Easter, the disciples still did not believe. They had a very hard time rejoicing and trusting on Monday, even though they were right there, right there for the day of resurrection. Yet even Monday is the day of the Lord. Even Monday is a day to sing God's, pra sing God's praises, to sing about God's presence and blessing and loving kindness in our lives. Today, this second Easter outside of our churches, even today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. This is the day, this is the day that our God has made, that our God has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that our God has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that our God has made. Open to us, open to us your gates, O oh God, your gates, O oh God. We will go in, we will go in to your holy place, to your holy place. Open to us your gates, O oh God. We will go into your holy place. Open to us, open to us your gates, O oh God. You are our God, you are our God. We will praise your name, we will praise your name. We will give thanks. We will give thanks for your faithfulness, for your faithfulness. You are our God, we will praise your name. We will give thanks for your faithfulness. You are our God, you are our God, we will praise your name. Let's pray. How thankful we are to worship a kind and merciful God. In the midst of our difficulty, we rejoice. There is always more to life than the hardness of it. Holy One, we lift our thankful hearts on this Easter morning, remembering that there is always life, always resurrection, always something new after the old is gone, even when the letting go is painful even when the endings seem like death. May we always remember that in and around us is mercy, loving kindness, careful holding by a loving sacredness. May we turn to the holy, 
when we are hurting. May we release our worries to love and life. May we find peace instead of fear. May we learn to trust spirit more than anyone else. May we be righteous in our acknowledgement that we depend on the power of the holy for our very lives. May we remember that our strength comes from that which is beyond understanding. And so, on this Easter morning, when our hearts ache for normalcy, for the sight of our friends and loved ones, and the songs of Easter praise, we turn in gratitude to you, Holy One. May we remember that this is the day, that every day is the day, the day the Lord has made. May we rejoice and be glad in it. As we gather on this special day with our steady 15, our closest friends and family, we are grateful that that many of us are receiving our vaccinations or have appointments made to get that help soon. We are grateful to the scientists who have worked night and day to develop these vaccines. We are grateful for those who put in long hours delivering this longed for release from our isolation. May they be strengthened for the ongoing journey and may we be strengthened in our resolve to maintain our safety measures until we are truly safe. We are grateful that we will soon be able to meet again face to face. We continue to pray for those around the world that they too may have the vaccines they need that our governments will share with those less fortunate. We pray for those parts of our own province and our country that are still in the midst of dire distress from the variants. Comfort their hearts as they lock down to protect themselves and each other. We pray for all who are sick, for the healthcare workers, for teachers, for truckers, and others who labor on day after day. We pray for our loved ones and friends who are ill and those who are recovering from surgery or who are in treatment or awaiting treatment. May our hearts be comforted and our patients be strengthened. May we be, be supported and encouraged in our care for each other. May we continue with hope in expectation and with courage. In all things for which we pray, give us grace and wisdom for the sake of Jesus the Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the light of Christ, the love of Christ, and the resurrection of Christ keep our hearts in hope, in joy, in comfort, and, res and, and refreshment, and rejoicing. Thank you for joining us. Amen. <laughs>